At this point in the 2024 presidential election cycle, just one thing is absolutely clear. The race to 270 electoral votes will be decided by just a handful of voters in a historically low number of battleground states. Before we really dive into this video's content, make sure to check out my official forecast website at electionpredictionsofficial.com. It will be the very first link in the description and comment section below. Updated monthly and soon weekly, you will see how the 2024 presidential election is taking shape over time based on polling data, shifts and trends, sociodemographic data, prediction markets, and several other key data points. I will be using this website in a lot of my videos going forward, so feel free to bookmark it so you can follow along. Now looking ahead to election night this November, election coverage on the various news networks will be focused on possibly as few as four and definitely no more than seven key battleground states. Those are Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. All seven were decided by less than three percentage points in the 2020 election. Donald Trump carried them all except for Nevada in 2016, and then Biden won them all except for North Carolina in 2020. Perhaps the most telling sign of how narrow the electoral college map has become is the increasing number of states where one party has consistently been victorious in recent presidential elections. Over the past four presidential election cycles, from Barack Obama's win over John McCain in 2008 to Joe Biden's victory over Donald Trump in 2020, 20 states have consistently supported the Democratic nominee. Coincidentally, 20 states have also backed the Republican candidate in each of those elections. This means that 80% of all U.S. states, or 40 out of 50, voted in the exact same direction across each of the last four presidential elections. This level of consistency has not been seen since the early 1900s. Only 10 states have switched between parties since 2008, and many of those are not even considered to be swing states anymore, namely Indiana, Iowa, Ohio, and Florida. They have each leaned strongly in favor of Republicans in the Trump era. North Carolina, another of the 10 switchers, has not voted blue since Obama's 2008 win. Dating back a little bit further, in the six presidential elections held since 2000, here in the 21st century, a period when each party has won the presidency three times, Republicans in 2000, 2004, and 2016, and Democrats in 2008, 2012, and 2020, all but six states, Colorado, Florida, Iowa, Nevada, Ohio, and Virginia have voted for the same party in at least five of those six contests. The map on your screen right now is displaying how each state has voted in that period. The deepest of red or blue states have voted for Democrats or the GOP in all six. The next lightest in five out of six, and so on. Iowa is the only state to split evenly, colored in yellow. It voted Democrat in 2000, 2008, and 2012, and Republican in 2004, 2016, and 2020. Shifting gears to the 2024 cycle now, the election predictions official forecast designates 18 states as remotely competitive in the upcoming cycle, and even among just those 18, 8 are rated as likely to go to Biden or Trump. The likely rating covers states projected to go in either direction by a margin between 7 to 12 points. Or in other words, while safe states, covering margins greater than 12%, clearly favor one party and are not going to be competitive even in a landslide year, likely states have a clear lean, but an upset is possible. Four other states are rated as lean, covering margins between 2 to 7 points, where one party has an edge, but the race is considered competitive. That leaves just six states, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, as tilting in either direction, with projected margins falling below 2%. That should effectively be considered toss-ups at this time. Back in 2016, Trump's key to victory was narrowly flipping Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, all by less than a point from what had traditionally been labeled as the blue wall prior to that election, the 18 states that had voted Democratic in every election from 1992 to 2012. Had Hillary Clinton held this critical Rust Belt trio in that election, she would have defeated Trump. 
However, since Trump's breakthrough, Democrats have seemingly regained ground, with Biden flipping them back into the Democratic column in 2020 and the party securing gubernatorial victories in both 2018 and 2022 in all three states. Again, they proved decisive. Had Trump held them in his column, he would have been reelected to a second term. Notably, while Trump's victory in 2016 was attributed to his appeal among non-college-educated white voters in this region, Democrats' success in the 2022 midterms was largely driven by rebounding support in the well-educated working-class suburbs, despite resoundingly negative feelings on the economy and Biden's job performance. Democrats won the governor elections in both Michigan and Pennsylvania by double digits, and John Fetterman won the Pennsylvania Senate race by five points, despite trailing Republican Mehmet Oz in polls headed into election day. These results highlight the potential challenge for the Republican Party, and Trump more specifically, in retaking Michigan and Pennsylvania at the presidential level, while abortion rights remain a prominent issue for voters. Many Democratic strategists have joked online that every advertisement the Biden re-election campaign runs in 2024 should contain a noun, a verb, and Roe v. Wade. And while this may be humorous, there is data to back this up. A big reason why Trump is pulling ahead of Biden right now is that Trump does have a trust advantage on several key issues. According to poll after poll, voters think the former Republican president would do a better job on the economy, national security, immigration, and foreign policy, while Biden has a narrow advantage on democracy and a much larger one on abortion. Those two issues, democracy and abortion, are the Democratic Party's strongest issues in a cycle that is otherwise really not looking good for them. In fact, it may be that the only chance that Biden has of winning re-election is by persuading enough pro-choice voters in Michigan and Pennsylvania, as well as elsewhere, that voting for him is a vote for codifying the right to an abortion in law. To prove this point even further, in Wisconsin, on the other hand, a fundamentally more favorable state for Republicans, Democrats won the governor's race last year by a much smaller margin than in Michigan or Pennsylvania, and Republican Senator Ron Johnson won re-election despite his unpopularity. But the landslide win last spring for a liberal state Supreme Court justice in a race that revolved entirely around abortion rights suggests that even despite its pro-Republican demographics, Wisconsin is whiter and less college-educated than any of the other states in the same category, and its relative trend compared to the nation at large, R plus 7 since the 2012 election, the issue of abortion provides Biden with a window of opportunity in Wisconsin. And further south, Democrats hope that the Republican state legislature's unpopular abortion ban in North Carolina might help them regain ground in a state where they have now lost seven straight presidential and Senate races by less than five percentage points. Though their lack of robust voter mobilization infrastructure as compared to Georgia and Arizona makes their path to victory in North Carolina a challenging one in 2024. Now it's still very early of course, but these initial race classifications have significant implications. Let's head over to this 2024 electoral college map where we have counted all of the states generally considered to be safe or likely for either party, according to a majority of election analysts and pundits out there, leaving the rest as toss-ups. Democrats hold a 211 to 149 electoral vote advantage. That means that if the GOP cannot reverse the recent movement of Michigan and Pennsylvania back towards Democrats, or regain their strength in the Sunbelt states of Arizona and Georgia, then as you can see here, the odds will be heavily stacked against them. The one state I have yet to mention, Nevada, appears of the 20 states that have consistently voted Democratic since 2008 to be the most likely to shift towards the GOP in 2024. But even if Republicans come away with Nevada's six electoral votes this November, as well as Arizona and Georgia sweeping the Sun Belt, where Trump is polling really, really well right now, if Biden holds Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, as well as all of the other states that he won in 2020, in this case Minnesota, Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District, and New Hampshire, he would reach exactly 270 electoral votes. Put another way, putting 2024 polling data aside for a minute, and focusing exclusively on the trends that we have seen in recent elections, 
Trump is operating with a much smaller margin of error in 2024 than Biden is, even with the incumbent Democrat being the most unpopular president in modern history and Trump's favorability on the rise. Now another noteworthy aspect of this early forecast is the absence of Ohio and Florida from the list of truly competitive states. Both have historically been fiercely contested battlegrounds in presidential elections, making their absence noticeable, especially for all of my older viewers or non-election nerds out there. Florida famously decided George W. Bush's win in 2000, and Ohio cemented his victory in 2004. As recently as 2016, Hillary Clinton spent more money advertising in those two states than any others. And while Biden largely conceded Ohio in 2020, after a vote for Trump by eight points in 2016, Florida still saw more television advertising than any other state. Now here in 2024, the Biden re-elect seemingly has no intention of contesting the state, nor should they as it would be a waste of valuable resources. Florida shifted four and a half points more Republican than the rest of the nation between 2016 and 2020, the third most of any state, and Republican incumbents Governor Ron DeSantis and Senator Marco Rubio were re-elected by 19 and 16 points, landslides by Florida standards in 2022. It's also worth noting that given the 2024 election will be a Biden versus Trump rematch, voter opinions may be less swayed by advertising than in a typical race due to the well-established views of these two candidates. Advertising could still, of course, influence the margins, and in a presidential election that seems likely to hinge on a small number of voters in just a few key states, every margin could be crucial. But come November 2024, if the choice is between Biden and Trump once again, chances are that these few states will play kingmaker once again. That is all though for today's video, let me know in the comments what you think. I appreciate all positive or negative comments. Shout out to my channel members on screen here, thank you so much for your support. If you would like to become a member, go ahead and click the join button below this video to receive exclusive perks. Make sure also to subscribe to my channel down below and please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can check out more content from my channel here and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. EP out.